10 Secrets of the Human Psyche that few people know about. How often do we have to fight with ourselves, with temptation, with emotions, with laziness? Sometimes it seems that all life consists of this struggle, and often victory is given with great difficulty. 1. Treat yourself well. Avoid the temptation to berate yourself for mistakes and procrastination. Do not bring down thunder and lightning on your head for disruption of planned affairs or weakness shown. Treat yourself with sympathy and forgive shortcomings, even when it is not easy. By forgiving yourself, you prevent your brain from entering the slippery slope of moral indulgence that leads to further relapses and more procrastination. Scientific Explanation The term moral indulgence was coined by Stanford professor Kelly McGonigal. She conducted a series of studies as a result of which it turned out that our brain, under the load of guilt, is especially susceptible to temptations. The fact is that the brain is designed to protect not only the health of its owner, but also his mood. While you're making excuses, cursing yourself for laziness and weakness, while you're picking up the harshest and rudest words in your address, trying to strengthen your motivation, your brain is desperately looking for ways to cheer you up. And the most pleasant will, of course, be what you are trying to avoid. Come on, you already ate a piece of cake. The diet is broken. Eat up the rest, you weak-willed nonentity. Or missed a deadline again? Yes, quit this business. You are still incapable of such work. Lazy procrastinator. Yes, to hell with him. I'll look through the selection of cats and go to bed. These are clear illustrations of how moral indulgence works. Treat yourself well. Forgive weaknesses. Celebrate successes. And don't get stuck in an endless cycle of guilt and comforting indulgences. 2. The Freebie Trap In boutiques, beauty salons, car dealerships, restaurants, and other places of active spending of money, a very common trap can lie in wait for you, free services or small gifts. For example, a cup of tea while you wait in line for a haircut at the master. Sweets in a transparent vase at the checkout of the store. A compliment from the chef while the order is being prepared. This is how the institution forms the so-called loyalty to yourself and your brand. Tip. Don't take anything for free if you don't want to spend extra money. Scientific Explanation. Man is a social animal that needs close interaction with other members of his species. The mechanism of this interaction has been perfected over millions of years and is firmly wired in your brain and one of its components is the desire to give back without fail in response to a gift, or return a favor with a favor. Although you are not aware of your duty, the brain regards the unexpected freebie as a debt and makes you feel obligated. Our ancient brain regards the gift in the same way as it did millions of years ago, when human society was no different from the population of monkeys, as an invitation to cooperation. Willy-nilly, this unconscious debt has to be repaid, by spontaneous purchases, a calm attitude to overpriced prices, brand recommendations to friends, etc. One cup of coffee offered for free, and now you are already in the freebie trap. Marketers and business people are well aware of all this, so if you do not want to be manipulated, remember the rule. Never take anything for free. In our world there is no free. 3. Read a little. Advice for those who love to read but he always has no time. If you just can't bring yourself to start reading books, or more often than not, you start but give up before you get to the end. Scientific explanation. This hitch, which irritates intelligent but busy people, is provoked by analysis paralysis. Between you and interesting books is the fear of the brain, the fear of the amount of work ahead. You may not even realize it, but the brain does not welcome long-term projects. They spend a lot of energy. You will endlessly say tomorrow to yourself, or decide to read a little. Ten pages won't frighten your brain. It's not much, it's not long at all, and reading won't tire you out. A book usually contains 200 to 300 pages, which means that you will read one book on average per month. Twelve books a year isn't too much, but that's twelve books more than nothing, right? In addition, you only need to persuade yourself to pick up a book and start reading. Then you will get involved and read, of course, more, as much as you want. But if not, then no, read at least a dozen pages and praise yourself for your consistency and craving for knowledge. 4. 
Train in your mind. Visualize the skills you want to acquire. Whatever you do, whatever goals you plan to achieve, set aside time during the day and before bed for the practice of visualization. Imagine what you want in detail. Only not a thing that I would like to have, but a skill. Scientific explanation. Visualization is a concept known both to specialists in the field of brain work and to a wide range of people. The ability of the human brain to learn is so great that even a simple idea of the desired actions makes it turn on activity in those areas that are responsible for these actions performed in reality. This applies to any action, even heavy physical exertion. When you imagine that, for example, lifting a barbell, blood rushes to the required muscles, the brain prepares them for the load. Of course, imagination alone will not build muscle, but visualization can shorten your path to your dream and strengthen your motivation. However, this brain hack only works if you visualize your own actions and not their result, for example. Visualizing a new beautiful car can only warm your soul and say, visualizing the actions to earn money for this car will help put your thoughts in order and set clear goals for yourself. Five, don't chat after the gym. Physical activity or an extreme situation makes you more talkative than usual. When chatting during fitness, it's easiest to accidentally blurt out a secret, especially if an acquaintance is training with you. So if you are afraid to say too much, do not share information too actively after you have done a good job with a barbell. Scientific explanation. Physical activity and extreme situations trigger the fight or flight reaction in the body, increased heart rate, faster breathing for better oxygen supply to the muscles, blood flow to the limbs and other similar physiological activity of the body. The brain reacts to this state as a threat of danger and mobilizes all forces in order to escape from it or fight back. And in particular, it increases the craving for communication with other representatives of its kind. The mechanism of this connection is not fully understood, but Jona Berger, a professor at the Wharton School of Business, has convincingly proved its existence in a series of experiments. It can be assumed that the increase in talkativeness in case of danger saved the lives of our ancestors, forcing people to share information about the threat and the experience of overcoming it. Be that as it may, keep in mind, physical activity makes you a godsend for a spy for about half an hour. 6. Put aside the churids. Put aside puzzles, charades and other games and toys that develop mindfulness, speed of thinking, and depth of knowledge. Mind games don't work, so don't waste your time on them. If you want to take care of the future of your brain, it's functioning in old age, go in for sports, as physical activity is the only proven way to prevent cognitive abilities. Scientific Explanation Let's give the floor to Harvard attention expert Jeremy Wolf. In the United States, Video games and apps have been frequently advertised lately to help increase your cognitive abilities and improve your attention functions. Many game makers promise that you won't lose your memory as you age. However, most of the evidence suggests that the more you play these video games or solve Sudoku, the better you will hone your skills in just that particular activity. If instead of driving a couple of blocks, you take a walk without any mental exertion, it will do you much more good. All of this has to do with circulation. For example, my mother is already over 80 years old and she is getting older. Will she lose her mental powers completely? If she wants to invest in something, then I advise her to spend it on the gym than on some puzzle toys. 7. Paralysis of Analysis If you have a difficult task to do that you do not know how to approach, break the task into many subtasks. And the smaller these subtasks, the better. For example, you need to write an important document. The first item might be, sit down at the table. Second, turn on the computer. Third, open a text editor. Fourth, write the first two sentences. It is best to write down these points, put the list in front of your eyes and follow the steps in sequence. You will not notice how you will be drawn into the process and the job will be done. Scientific explanation. Analysis paralysis. Information overload is a condition when too long and versatile thinking about a task leads to the fact that working memory turns off. Taking with it the area of the brain that is responsible for willpower, the prefrontal cortex. You may even experience suffocation as a physical symptom of analysis paralysis. 
There is a known way to deceive the brain. Try to stop thinking about your difficult task as a task itself and look at it exclusively as a sequence of small tasks that do not frighten working memory, each of which will be processed sequentially. 8. Put in place. Want to save more but love shopping? Walk, look at the windows but do not touch anything, and even more so, do not pick it up. Once again, do not touch the goods, no matter how interesting and attractive they may seem. This will allow you to refrain from spontaneous purchases without any problems. Scientific Explanation Dopamine enters the scene, a hormone that is still in some places, for example, on Wikipedia, called the pleasure hormone. In fact, dopamine is a hormone of desire, not pleasure. It makes you want, but that does not give you a feeling of satisfaction. Dopamine acts like a carrot fixed in front of a donkey's nose. It forces you to endlessly follow desires, but it always pushes back the reward. You may have noticed, the anticipation of buying a thing that you have long wanted always gives more positive emotions than the subsequent pleasure of owning this thing. Your dopaminergic neurons fire as soon as something interesting and attractive catches your eye, but they work a hundred times more efficiently when what you want becomes tangible, literally. Blood rushes to the face, the heart begins to beat harder. Dopamine is the biochemical precursor of adrenaline, and without noticing it, you are already putting some unnecessary nonsense into the basket. Stick your hands deep into your pockets and gawk at the merchandise, but nothing more. 9. Close the plate. Focus on the feeling of hunger. Do not sit down at the table until you are hungry, and get up from the table as soon as you are full, even if there is food left on your plate. If you are having dinner in a company and you do not have the opportunity to immediately finish the meal, close the plate as soon as you feel full, for example, with another plate or napkin. As a last resort, just move your plate out of sight. This simple trick will help you not to overeat. Scientific Explanation Any conscious volitional effort, in this case, to stop eating when you feel full, is made by the prefrontal cortex of the brain, your center of self-control. During the day, you make many decisions and make hundreds of small choices. What to wear, which route to get to work, what to buy for dinner, etc., which gradually depletes the resource of the prefrontal cortex, tires it, and your will weakens. Help yourself. By removing food from your field of vision, you will stop the production of dopamine, a hormone that makes a person want. That is, take actions in search of a reward. Food your brain perceives as a reward but only when you see it and smell it. When you are full, the smell of food no longer seems so attractive to your brain, but your eyes continue to transmit information about the delicacy straight to your dopaminergic neurons, and this process takes place without your consciousness and desire. Instead of exerting willpower by consciously keeping yourself from eating up and overeating, just hide food out of sight and stop dopamine production. You will feel better in minutes. 10. Dim the lights. Dim the lights in all rooms an hour and a half before bedtime. Arrange in the bathroom the ability to switch from overhead bright light to soft and dim, for example. Put a table lamp there. This incredibly simple technique will improve falling asleep and increase the quality of your sleep. Scientific Explanation The importance of sleep for various body systems cannot be overestimated. In a dream, hormones are produced that heal the affected areas of tissue, promote the growth and strengthening of muscle mass, as well as the partial destruction of fat reserves. If you are on a diet, you lose weight most intensively in your sleep. If you play sports, in a dream, muscle tissue is restored and strengthened. If you are a child or teenager, you grow in a dream. And without exception, all people in their sleep structure and archive the information received during the day process memories, grow the synapses necessary for the development of the brain, the connections between the neurons of the brain. We humans are diurnal, so the brain reacts to light as if it were day and to darkness as if it were night. Dimming the light, you give information. Twilight has come and it's time to get ready for bed. In response, the brain gives a signal to produce the hormone melatonin, the regulator of circadian rhythms. Melatonin, in turn, sends a signal throughout your body to start preparing for sleep. The metabolism slows down since you no longer need to extract energy for active actions, 
Mental processes also go into sleep mode. An hour and a half is enough time for your body to prepare for sleep. The bathroom, where you spend some time just before going to bed, performing hygiene procedures, should also be dimly lit. There is nothing worse than being exposed to bright light just before bed, says circadian neurologist Russell Foster. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and hit notification bell so you will be notified whenever we upload a new video. Remain better.